In this video, I'm going to be talking about something called streaming in React and Next.js. Streaming is a very interesting concept and I think you should know about it because it will help you understand a lot about how it improves the perceived loading performance in React and Next.js. And we're going to dive deep into this concept and you're going to really enjoy this. So before I explain what streaming means, you need to understand what SSR is. SSR is of course server side rendering and to understand what SSR means, I will divide the concept of SSR into five important parts. So in a very simple manner, what happens is when the user opens the browser and types the URL of a web page and they click on enter, then basically the client is now requesting for that web page from the server. So the client is basically requesting for that web page now, right? If that particular website the client is trying to enter utilizes SSR, then the following five steps will occur. So in number one, SSR will make sure that all data for a given page is fetched on the server. All right, so this is the first part. So in SSR, all the necessary data for a specific web page is obtained from the server. This data could come from a database, an API, or any other data source. So by data over here, we mean API, database, or any other resource. All right, so the first step will be when the user types the URL and they're trying to go to a website, whatever website they're trying to go, the first page that is supposed to be rendered to the user, for that page, SSR is going to, first of all, fetch all the data that is to be rendered in the page. And by data, it means data received from the API or present in the database or some different resource. So once the data for that given page is fetched, then we move on to step number two. Step number two is the server then renders the HTML for the page. So the server then combines the data from step one with predefined HTML templates or components, which are nothing but in the React components, the HTML tags which you have, those are the predefined HTML templates or components. So the server combines the data with those predefined HTML templates or components to create the complete HTML structure of the page. So whatever the web page needs to have, the server will create a complete HTML structure of how the web page should look like. So in step two, that is what happens. Then we move on to step three. In step three, the HTML, CSS and JavaScript for the page are sent to the client. All right. So this is pretty self-explanatory. After the complete HTML is generated in step number two, in step number three, the server sends the HTML, CSS, as well as the JavaScript for that page to the client. But remember, we know that only the HTML structure of the website has been processed. The JavaScript logic hasn't been added to the HTML yet. But in step three, we are also sending the JS for that page to the client, but the JS hasn't been integrated on the page yet. All right. It's just being sent to the client. And of course, it's being sent by the server because once you deploy your application to production all the js code html css and all the resource everything stays on the server right so only the server can send all that code to the client so in step three the html css and js for that page are sent to the client then in step four a non-interactive user interface is shown using the generated html and css Sorry for the bad handwriting, this is really terrible, <laughs> but I hope you can understand what I'm trying to say. So in step four, as I said, in step three, the HTML, CSS and JS are being sent, but the JS hasn't been integrated on the HTML structure, right? So there is no underlying logic in it. All that has happened is we are getting the complete HTML structure of the page, but it has no logic integrated into it. Since in number three, we are sending the HTML, CSS and JS to the client. In number four, a non-interactive user interface, a non-interactive UI is shown using the generated HTML and CSS. CSS. So at the moment, in step number four, the client gets to properly see the complete UI of the page they're trying to access. And they get to see the actual UI with the proper HTML and CSS. Just that whatever buttons or event handlers we have, those are non-interactive because the JS hasn't been integrated into this yet. But in step number four, the JS has already reached the client. It just hasn't integrated it into the HTML. So what happens in the last step, which is the step number five, finally, React hydrates the UI to make it interactive. All right, pretty self-explanatory. So in the last step, since we already have the entire UI structure for that particular page being displayed to the client in their browser, the last step is obviously to add all the functionality and logic. So once the non-interactive user interface is shown in step number four, React then takes over. It hydrates the user interface, which means it attaches event handlers and other necessary functionality to the pre-rendered HTML. This makes the user interface interactive, enabling user interactions and dynamic updates. 
So hydrate here obviously means that we are adding logic to the non-interactive HTML page. And in step number five, once React hydrates the JavaScript onto this non-interactive HTML page, then everything becomes interactive and all the dynamic updates can come through depending on what the user decides to click and not. So this in a nutshell, these five steps is exactly what SSR means. So first, the data for a given page is fetched on the server. And remember, we cannot proceed to step two until all the data for the given page is fetched. So if this page, let's say, is utilizing like like one or two API calls, then all those API calls first needs to be fetched from the database after the database returns all the value. So after all the fetching has been done, only then we go to step number two. Then in step number two, all the data from step number one is combined with the predefined HTML template or the components basically that you have in React. So the data is combined with those components to finally give you this structure, the UI structure. Then in step three, the HTML, CSS and JS for the page are sent to the client. And since the data and the React component have combined and already created the UI, so in step number four, a non-interactive user interface is shown using the generated HTML and CSS, right? It's not interactive, but it's set up and the actual UI is visible to the user for that page. Then in five, React hydrates the UI to make it interactive. So this was SSR in a nutshell. I hope you could understand this properly. So now that we know what SSR is, I want to explain you what could be the problem in this case in implementing SSR. So what happens is these steps that I mentioned one to five, these steps are sequential and blocking, meaning that the server can only render the HTML for a page once all the data has been fetched. So we cannot go to step two, three, four, and five until one is complete. And if the step one is trying to fetch a lot of data and it becomes time consuming, then think about it. Steps two, three, four, and five are not going to execute. The user isn't even going to get the non-interactive user interface shown to them until all the data fetching is complete. So depending on how the data fetching goes on, the other steps are very much reliant on it, on the step number one. So this could cause some blockage, right? Depending on the data. So SSR with React and Next.js helps improve the perceived loading performance by showing a non-interactive page to the user as soon as possible. So we know that this is what SSR does. So if I go to the Next.js documentation here once and I go down over here, you can see over here that when the user types the name of the website, then a blank page is shown at first. But because we are using SSR, so what happens is since the server sends the pre-rendered HTML to the user, as soon as the pre-rendered HTML is sent to the client, the client gets a non-interactive interactive page displayed to them. So server rendered page sent to the client once all components are ready. But notice over here, however, it can still be slow as all data fetching on server needs to be completed before the page can be shown to the user. So SSR is popular than CSR because in client side rendering, we don't even get the pre-rendered HTML. Even the HTML has to be rendered on the client side. So that's why in React, just in normal React without using Next.js, whenever we deploy our app to the production and we try to go to our website for the first time, for a long time, we get a white page being displayed, right? So in Next.js, that gets reduced considerably because the HTML is being pre-rendered on the server and that is being sent to the client. So the client, instead of getting to see a white page, they get to see a non-interactive UI page and then it gets hydrated with all the logic. So yes, the initial load time is reduced in SSR compared to CSR, but SSR also has some problems because it can still be slow as data fetching on server needs to be completed before the page can be shown to the user. So because of step number one over here, even SSR can be slow, even though it's faster than CSR compared to the initial page load time, it can still be slow because all the other steps are dependent on the data fetching, right? That makes sense. So because all data fetching on server needs to be completed before the page can be shown to the user, so SSR can also be slower in some cases. And this is exactly where streaming comes into the picture. So what streaming does is streaming allows you to break down the pages HTML into smaller chunks and progressively send those chunks from the server to the client. Now to elaborate on this further, let me go to this page over here in the docs. So you can see this is what streaming does. So compared to the previous one where this was empty and then it got the pre-rendered HTML, what happens in streaming is it allows you to break down the pages HTML into smaller chunks and progressively send those chunks from the server to the client. To understand this diagram better, let's read the documentation. So it says this enables parts of the web page to be displayed sooner without waiting for all the data to load before any UI can be created. I think this line should be more than enough for you to understand this. So what's happening in this diagram is when this page loads, we can tell Next.js that this component over here and this component over here, they do not require any data fetching. So in this particular page, why should these components over here 
wait for these middle components to fetch their data before this entire page as a whole can be sent to the client. So it's of course better if these components can be sent by themselves progressively and they do not have to wait for all these components to finish their data fetching. Right, so that is exactly what streaming allows us to do. It allows us to break down the HTML into smaller chunks and progressively send those chunks or stream them from the server to the client based on whenever they're ready. So streaming works well with React's component model because each component can be considered a chunk. So this over here is a chunk, this is a chunk, these are individual chunks and so on. The components that have higher priority, example product information or that don't rely on data can be sent first such as layout and React can start hydration earlier. So these components which do not depend on data fetching, even though they are part of the same page, they can be sent first from the server without having to wait for all the data fetching to be complete. Based on their priority, they can be sent one by one from the server to the client and be rendered to the user. So components that have low priorities for example reviews related products can be sent in the same server request after their data has been fetched and to help you understand this even better what I'll do is I'll go down here and let's say I have this entire web page this is www.xyz.com and here so let's say this is a e-commerce site and over here we have the navbar and over here we have some sort of a layout so we have some things going on over here there is the nav bar of some sort and over here we have the product image and then this part over here takes up the product info right info and this is the image and somewhere down in the bottom we have product reviews right so this part is product reviews this is the entire component for product reviews now in an e-commerce website we know that the image the product image and product info is more important than the product reviews right because the reviews are at the bottom section we don't know when the user is going to go down to check that so it's not that high priority because when the user lands on this page the first thing that's going to be visible to them are these the header the product info and the layout so without streaming what would happen is this entire page would have to wait for all of these data to be loaded so until the product info and product reviews hasn't been loaded in header and navbar also won't be rendered on the client so once the server completely fetches all the data and then it pre-renders the html only then it's sent to the client and we get to see a non-interactive user interface but even these components have to end up waiting for all of this to load which is not feasible so what streaming will allow you to do is it will see that this component doesn't require any data fetching so it will send this to the client first without waiting for these to be loaded so this will be sent to the client first then it will see that this also doesn't require any data fetching so this will also be sent to the client first after this component or maybe both of them together so now the client even if they won't get to see this middle portion they'll get to see this layout and also in the middle section, we can specify or we can say that because the product reviews are at the bottom and they're not of high priority and the product information is more in priority, we can make sure that the product info also gets sent first as soon as its data is fetched without this part having to wait for the product reviews to be fetched. So once the product info is fetched, we can directly stream that to the client from the server as well, even if the product reviews haven't been fetched. And in the same server request itself, whenever the product review gets fetched somewhere later in time, they will also gradually be streamed to the client. So the client in the end will get the entire data. But the good part is because of streaming, this entire web page, basically the components in this web page can be sent one by one without having for each of these components to wait for the entire data fetching to be done. So this can be sent first, then this can be sent and then since the product info is also a higher priority this can also be sent after obviously its data fetching is over and then since product review comes in the end and it's not that important and the user opens that web page since it's at the bottom so this can be set as the lowest priority and whenever it loads it can be sent gradually for that same initial web page request so this product info won't have to wait for the loading of product reviews to be complete so this improves the speed by so much basically the perceived loading speed to the user by so much right so the user doesn't have to wait for the entire data to be fetched it is no more sequential and blocking the entire page is divided into small chunks these specific components are divided into small chunks and they are streamed or progressively sent from the server to the client one by one as and when they are ready which prevents blocking and makes the perceived loading time fast
So SSR, although it's useful, but in cases where the data fetching takes a lot of time, SSR can also cause a little bit of issues. But because of streaming in React and XJS, that process gets so much streamlined and better. So that's basically how streaming works in React and Next.js. And as you can see over here, this diagram, Next.js has provided a very nice diagram. You can see that, let's say for these components, no data fetching is present. Let me zoom into this first. As you can see that the red part is fetching data on the server. So for the layout components, since no data is being fetched, we can directly render the HTML on the server for those components that do not require data fetching. Then we can load the code to the client and we can hydrate and add the logic to it. So you see this doesn't have to wait for the data fetching of these middle components or for the product info and product reviews. Then, as I mentioned, that maybe we need to send this first, the product info, compared to the product reviews. So in that case, since the product info can be fetched first and it doesn't have to wait for the product reviews, you can see since product reviews here is taking more time, but product info is taking less time to fetch its data, it doesn't have to wait for product reviews. As soon as it fetches its product info, it goes on and it renders the HTML on the server, it loads the code on the client and it hydrates. And then in the end, the product reviews, which took a little more time to fetch its data, it takes up this much more extra time and then after its data fetching on the server is over it renders its html on the server loads the code on the client and then it also starts to get hydrated by react so you can see in this entire process this much time was saved and these components did not even have to wait for anybody in the first place so isn't that amazing so as you can see over here uh, streaming is particularly beneficial when you want to prevent long data requests from blocking the page from rendering as it can reduce time to first byte and first content full paint it also helps to improve time to interactive tti especially on slower devices so basically the time it takes for the entire web page to be visible to the client when the client types the url of the web page shortens by a lot and the client gets to see that non-interactive page way faster even compared to just ssr and csr streaming allows the user to view that first web page way faster so its first contentful paint is way better so now as you can see there's this example over here so streaming can be done in xjs with the help of suspense this suspense works by wrapping a component that performs an asynchronous action which is fetching data showing fallback ui so basically in this case in this example they have shown we have a post feed and a weather so in that particular web page there will be post feed and some weather details but they both should not be dependent on each other like this shouldn't wait for this data fetching to complete for this to be sent from the server to the client no we want them to be sent as and when they are ready as soon as possible without any of them blocking each other so to simulate that we use suspense all suspense does is when there is some sort of loading going on we can specify this fallback property and we can add whatever we want we can even put a component in here and or whatever and we can show that this part is loading so for both of these we have added a fallback suspense for here it says loading weather for here it says loading feed so if this ends up loading faster if the data fetching for this component is done faster then the server will stream in that component to the client without waiting for the weather to complete and this will be visible to the user first in that particular page and as soon as the data for weather has also been fetched this will also be streamed in and this will also get visible to the page and in the end the entire post feed and weather will be visible altogether but the post feed won't be blocked or it won't be waiting for weather to complete before the post feed can be shown to the client first and vice versa for the weather as well so that's an example of how you can use streaming in next.js pretty self-explanatory and the last thing is by using suspense you get the benefits of streaming server rendering obviously progressively rendering html from the server to the client which i explained in this video and selective hydration react prioritizes what components to make interactive first based on user interaction the process of react hydrating all the components is also done much quicker because as and when the components or chunks are sent to the client react decides to hydrate them as soon as possible so at an overall everything is optimized and way more fast so all this time we thought ssr is great which it is but even ssr can be improved by this process of streaming so next.js app router is definitely amazing all the new features in next.js are really really super amazing it has a lot of amazing concepts within it and i definitely would suggest you to go through this documentation by yourself read all the different parts of this documentation and have your own understanding of how everything works and if you want me to continue explaining other parts of this as well of this app router or of this documentation then you can comment down in the comment section and i will look into it and make other videos on the same as well this was specifically a topic that i found really interesting and so i thought why not make a video on this and explain it to all of you so that's all for the video that's all about streaming in next.js and react if you enjoyed this video give it a like and subscribe and as usual stay tuned for more